Hey guys, I am Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm Chris Irvin. And we're here to talk to you today about MCT. MCT oil, guys, is probably one of the most popular supplements on a ketogenic diet, I yeah. would say. And most popular things, I think, in general, uh, with, with I think where health is going now. So, I mean, what is MCT? A lot of people say MTC, MCT, like, what is this? I mean, I get texts from my mom, my sister, and my aunt all the time. What about those MTCs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I feel like MCTs kind of got popular with the craze of putting, you know, fat in your coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, but so what MCTs are, it stands for medium chain triglycerides. Uh, that's pretty sciencey, but to just kind of give you some context to that, what that means is that these fats are a little bit, their molecular structure is a little bit different from other fats. It's a little bit shorter, which is why we call it a medium chain, which kind of gives us some different properties that we're going to talk about in this video. Yeah. So they're just, I mean, like you said, it's, it's shorter. You can just count them, how many carbons are in the actual fat. So for instance, you could uh, C6, C8, C10, you might hear these things, C12. That's just how many carbons are in the actual chain. So six is less than 12. That's just a shorter fat. Yeah, and the reason why that's important too to also give some context to that is that the way that fats are metabolized is that they're metabolized by taking their carbons apart. So the more carbons that are in a fat is the, the more it takes to digest them, the longer it takes. So what's unique about these MCTs is that their shorter chain allows them to be digested quicker and they actually can kind of bypass traditional digestion and you know provide the body with a very quick energy source. Right. And so you can find MCTs in a lot of normal foods. So coconut oil, palm oil, some dairy stuff, animal fats, things like that. They're, they're a naturally occurring um, fat. And so what we do though, is we isolate them and just take those MCTs out of those sources. So a lot of the things like we just showed you, the oils and the powders, they're made from typically coconut or a palm. It doesn't really matter where this comes from because we're just taking the, the molecule of the fat. So the source doesn't really matter. I know some people might be concerned that palm is bad for you. It's actually not. Uh, that's more of a concern to do with sustainability rather than a health concern. So either way from coconut or palm, doesn't really matter here. Yeah. And you know, the difference between like a, a coconut oil or a whole food source of MCTs compared to the oils and the powders is the types of MCTs that are contained in it. So earlier we kind of alluded to there's a C6, C8, C10, and C12. Those are kind of the, the four technical MCTs that you can, that are, that we classify. Um, so you know, the difference between this is like in coconut oil, the, the primary MCT that you're going to have is C12, which is known as lauric acid. And when you have an MCT oil supplement, traditionally you're going to have a lot more C10. You're not going to have any of that C12 in there because it's basically your, it's a, you know, extraction of that C10 mm -hmm. from the coconut oil. So kind of the difference between the two is, is that if you're looking to provide your body with quicker energy source, if you're looking to maybe stimulate some ketone production, which we'll get into in a second, MCT oil and MCT oil powders are going to be a little bit better because they have that longer, the kind of the longest of the MCTs. Uh, removed in that C12. Right. And so, but I mean, why would you want to supplement with MCT oil? I mean, there's a lot of different benefits here that you're going to get from using MCT instead of just getting them from a whole food. Again, they're supplements, so use them as such. Don't just have that be the only fat source that you're getting. But I mean, a, a, there's a lot of different things. So MCTs can stimulate ketone production. So with that, we're going to get a lot of different benefits, whether that's increasing mental performance, increasing physical performance, lowered inflammation levels, and a whole host of other things. Yeah, and, and you know, there's also a lot of other things that can come with that, like reducing your hunger. Um, you know, whenever we have an increase in ketone levels, we're also gonna see a decrease, typically see a decrease in blood glucose, so it can be a great way to kind of drive that number down. Uh, and you know, the, the ability for these fats to be digested quickly allow them to be a great energy source for, you know, if you're trying to get going in the morning and you need a little boost in energy, that's why we, we typically see it being used in coffee. You know, if you're trying to get a little boost before the gym, that's another great time to use them. But one of the things to kind of caution with with MCTs is that if they're, you know, too much is not a good thing right. with MCTs. Yeah, right. So just like with the ketones, your body, when they have too many, it goes, I don't want any more of this energy source. You guys have enough energy, flushes you out. So be careful with that. A lot of people like to call that um, disaster pants is a, is a very common way to, to do that. But yeah, it's pretty messy. Yeah, if you've ever talked to somebody who's had too much MCTs, uh, it's definitely not a great story that you'll hear from them. So, right. you know, if you are taking MCTs, something really important to consider is tapering up your dose just like you would with exogenous ketones. So, you know, if you are, if you're somebody who is, is new to 
ketogenic dieting or you're new to MCTs, note that this lower dose might not provide you with a ton of perceived benefits. You might not really get that cognitive boost that you would if you were taking a full dose, but as you become a little bit more you know, adapt to using this oil, you're gonna be able to take a little bit more and you're gonna be able to experience more of those benefits. Right. And so if you're looking to get those benefits, there's two main ways you can get MCT. So in a supplemental form, we have number one with an oil, so it usually looks like this, a big jug of it, or number two, in a can, which is a powdered MCT. So there's definitely differences between the two. So let's just start with the mo more common one, which is the MCT oil. Yeah, so MCT oil, like we said, is it's made from you know extracting the, C, you know basically removing the C12 from coconut oil, leaving you with typically mostly C10, a little bit of C8, and a very minimal amount of C6. Now there are some unique supplements out there, like this one that are actually are mostly C8, which, you know, based on our description of MCT should tell you that these are even more rapidly digesting and can lead to even, you know, quicker energy source. But, you know, the biggest difference between the powders and the oils is that the oils are going to be a little bit faster digesting because they're a pure oil. Um, they're also not going to be containing any fiber, which is contained in the powders. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. And they're actually cheaper per serving too. So if you're somebody who's using them frequently, uh, if you're using them several times a day, then you know going with the oil could be a better option. Yeah, I usually go like maybe a tablespoon, two tablespoons at a time. If I'm making a smoothie or recipe where I want to incorporate it, sometimes I use it a little bit like as a salad dressing. I'll put it in some guacamole to give it a little punch there. That's how I use the MCT oil personally. Yeah, and that same thing for me, that's the way that I use it. You know, a lot of people like to put the MCT oil in their coffee. The problem with that is, is that, you know, we all know how oil is with liquids. It doesn't really uh, mix in very well. So you end up with a drink that's just some oily fat sitting on right. top of your coffee. And you're just sipping on the fat and then it gets all greasy in your mouth. Not yeah. a big fan of that. Not, yeah. not the best tasting. So that's actually where the MCT oil powder can come in. Right. And I mean, one of the biggest things too is I travel a lot. Traveling with a liquid is just a, is a pain. You can't really mix it. So um, we have a, also an MCT powder here. So this stuff, they take the same MCT oil chains. So either C8, C10 primarily, and then we attach it with a, an acacia fiber. So this is actually a prebiotic fiber that's good for your gut. So it's not gonna kick you out of ketosis or anything like that, but what that means is that, you know, 30% of that serving is gonna be that acacia fiber because it needs to attach that to turn into a powder or else it will stay in, into a liquid. You're gonna have some advantages with that though. That's gonna cause the ketone to, or, or the MCT to actually be absorbed over a longer period of time. Since your, your gut has to cleave that bond and use both the fiber and the fat, what happens is that the, those disaster pan symptoms actually are much lower with a powder than with the oil, um, which is, I think, a huge plus, right? Yeah, I think yeah. that's probably my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think that the mixability for me, like I just actually mixed them up right before we had this um, video recording, and it's just so easy, like you take a spoon and you go like this, and you mix it and it's done. There's no weird separation, there's no weird greasiness, and it tastes amazing. So there's tons of different flavors, you can get them unflavored, with the oil, it's just generally an oil flavor, so you're not really getting, getting much, it just tastes like oil, which is nothing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so th those are the things. A Little bit more expensive per serving, just because it does require a lot more of a manufacturing process to attach that fiber to it, and so it's just harder, harder to make. But other than that, I think that they're, they're pretty similar and can be used in different areas. Yeah, and another great way to use the powders too is in like different recipes and yeah. stuff too. You know, MCT oil powder can be a great way to add a very high quality beneficial fat to uh, a keto recipe that you're trying to make. You know, we, we'd see the flavored powders being used very popularly in a lot of like keto desserts and right. stuff because of their great taste and flavor as well as, you know, being in a, in a powder form that allows you to incorporate them into a recipe. Right, and so, I mean, we obviously have a couple here that we make, so you don't have to get our stuff, but just a few things to watch out on. The oil is pretty standard, so I would just look to see if they, you're getting any flavors, flavored oils, if they have any weird artificial flavoring, any additives, any preservatives, stuff like that. You want to skip all that stuff. Again, it doesn't really matter if you get from coconut or palm, as long as that palm comes from, from a sustainable source. And then the powders, again, just make sure there's no weird stuff in there. So a lot of companies like to use a cheaper corn fiber. Things like that will actually increase your blood glucose and pretty much make the supplement irrelevant. So just make sure that there's an acacia fiber and no other weird ingredients, weird flavorings, weird sweeteners with a powder if you're gonna go that route as well. Yeah, and you know, and if you're trying to consider if you go down the rabbit hole of looking at the different types of oils that are out there, if you're trying to consider a standard MCT oil versus like a C8 like we have here, the difference is really in what your goal is. If your goal is just to increase your intake of healthy fats, 
a standard MCT oil is probably going to suit you just fine. But if your goal is trying to, you know, stimulate more ketone production, have a fat that's a little bit more rapidly digested and kind of increase your cognitive function, then a C8 might be a little bit more beneficial for you. So when selecting, you know, it's all about choosing which goal you're going for. Got it. So if you guys have any questions about the benefits of MCT oil or how to use it, just pop them in the comments below or ask us a question on Instagram. I am Dr. Anthony Gustin. And I'm the ketologist. And we'll see you guys next time. <music>